now um, uh, this is not live stream because I can't uh, uh, make my uh, encoder work uh, with this game but um, basically this game is uh, it's like a, a more advanced version of a game book and I'm not sure that you're familiar with this term um, game book uh, it's a true passion of mine uh, back when I was uh, I guess a teen or a tween, somewhere in between, right? Um, wow, that rhymes. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was a huge fan of uh, game books. Uh, I guess I'm still, I, I still am a fan, but I don't really have the time to um, uh, go through like every single page of the game book, which uh, which is exactly what I like to do. I would usually just uh, mark the page basically every page before I make a, a decision, you know, whether to uh, move, take a, like move forward, turn left, go right, um, all, all, the, all of that stuff. So um, playing a game book is not something that I can actually do uh, while on the go. Uh, I have like a, a paper on the side, a chart and everything, um, a dice even, uh, that was back before uh, the pages um, have their own like dice underneath them. So yeah. Uh, it's it's like a, a whole new version of uh, a gaming, you know, a, a whole new form of gaming. Um, and I do like reading, so it, it just works for me. But anyway, um, so uh, I've loved uh, game books, and uh, not uh, True Tales of Robin Hood is a, a game book. Well, obviously. Um, so uh, we'll just uh, take a quick look. Uh, I'm doing this with commentary because uh, uh, the game don't have any voice acting, uh, which uh, I guess uh, it's understandable uh, because uh, the game actually uh, was released on mobile uh, devices. I think both Android and iOS, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, yeah. So the game, uh, the, the game book was released on uh, mobile, uh, the mobile platform, and uh, the game there uh, doesn't have any uh, uh, voice acting. So uh, it's um, well natural that uh, the Steam version doesn't have uh, voice acting as well. Um, yeah, I guess it's basically a port. So um, yeah, okay, let's do it. Uh, and I'm gonna try to read. Uh, the words as best as I, as I could. Um, if uh, you haven't seen any of my uh, videos before, I do have a bit uh, of issues with uh, pronunciation because I learn uh, most of my English through uh, reading rather than uh, speaking. So yeah, I guess that didn't really uh, turn out well for me. Um, okay, so uh, let's click to continue. Alright, so um, the Music is actually quite nice. Uh, it does set the uh, tone, the setting of the game. Uh, book. I, I should start saying game book rather than game. But uh, uh, yeah, alright. So uh, King Richard the Lionheart is gone to the Crusades along with most of England's able bodied men and has left the kingdom in the hands of his brother, the wicked Prince John. I'm sure we all are uh, familiar with the story of uh, Robin Hood. Alright, so uh, meanwhile, the prince's uh, ambitious crony, the Sheriff of Nottingham, terrorizes the countryside. Um, as you strive against the evil sheriff, your uh, every choice will change your fate. fate. But fate can be fickle or forgiving. Just how much so depends on you. Alright, so uh, click to close before continuing. Um, I think I'll, uh, let me see, uh, I think I'll keep the sound on uh, and I just, uh, well, uh, fingers crossed that uh, my voice is uh, louder than the background sound because I can't change the uh, volume. I just can uh, directly mute the sound. So uh, yeah, alright. Alright, so let's see how long we can last before uh, we die. Um, Alright, so click the close before continuing. Uh, let's see, choose your difficulty level. Uh, let's just go with story mode. Yes, I actually want to enjoy the story. Alright, so England, uh, 1192, a quiet spring evening. Um, wait, let me see, uh, the game saves automatically with every choice you make, so you'll never lose your place. Oh, alright. 
So if I die, I can just go back one page. Okay. Um, click the close before continuing. Okay. So uh, these are all the stats here. Uh, you can recruit men apparently. Um, okay. So uh, bring me the Loxley bread. The sheriffs below uh, echoes through the walls of your home. The one named Robin. The rest are yours. Hobnailed boots shake the walls on all sides as <laughs> soldiers fill the house. You need to get out of here and you don't have much time. Alright, so I sneak out the back entrance, leap from the window, race for the stables. Uh, through the kitchen. Uh, the guards don't know me. I throw a cloak uh, around my shoulders and blend in with the household staff. Uh, huh. I don't think I can pull this off. So, but uh, let's try and see. Alright, so you reach into your closet. Definitely you can't disguise yourself as a maid, right? Because Robin is a guy, so manservant. <clears throat> Alright, so you finish your disguise with a white brimmed uh, hat, step into the hall and join a group of fleet fleeing servants. Unnoticed in the crowd, you escape from the main house to the chapel. Nice. Alright, so Father Timothy walks among his congregation. Fear not, my children, for though the sheriff does strike against this house, he shall not violate the sanctity of this church. Uh, so long as you remain within, you are safe. He notices you. Robin, I'm glad to see you well. So, uh, can you talk down to sheriff before, before this goes too far? Um, uh, I don't think this is going to work. Um, I'm a bit of a rebel, so I guess I'll go. Uh, we need to organize a resistance. Right. Um, so, oh, alright, so I got 55 men. Uh, you have garnered the allegiance of several um, merry men, as they will come to be known. Among other things, they can help you win battles, uh, waylay caravans, and steal the crowns, uh, Texas. Your merry men have a variety of duties, including hunting, training, and scouting. But a certain number are available for tasks or, or missions uh, at any time. Once assigned to a task, they will return slowly over time. Alright, so how do I assign uh, my men? Wait, uh, yeah. Father Timothy sigh, sighs. Uh, quickly then, my sword is in my study. You'll make better use of it than I. Uh, there's a heavy thumping at the door. The sheriff's guard demanding entry. When the door doesn't open, they break it down. You and your men surprise the guards with your defiance, briefly push them back. Then you hear it. Breaking glass. Then you smell it. A choking miasma. The church is on fire. Haha, <laughs> alright, while well, everyone's distracted, I feel my podcast with church cool. Uh, you know, to, you need gold to fund a rebellion, but uh, a resistance. Um, I skewer the guard in front of me, and uh, no retreat. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, just uh, waiting for death, so let's uh, escape under the cover of smoke and fight another day. Alright, so you disengage. Oh, I get. 15 more men, nice. You disengage and escape out the back, your men fall out, and by the bedlam of the burning church, you race across the fields. There's no pursuit, not immediate, immediately. Someone looks back, calls out, the fires uh, spread to the house and to all the buildings of your home. Oh, dang. <laughs> Alright, so you've gained a me measure of power for saving the people of Luxley. Power is often gained through selfless or heroic actions. Uh, as well as uh, through the steady struggle against the sheriff, power can eventually be used to start special projects in favor with the factions beyond Sherwood and influence the larger world beyond Sherwood Forest. Alright. Okay, nice. Um, Alright, so you pause, drawn to look in spite of yourself. The sky is smoke black at your back, shot red with devouring flames that fall upon the only home you've ever known. Uh, that's sad. But you can't really do anything, right? <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, nice. I got some gold. So you've gained renown, a measure of your deeds and accomplishments. Both nobles and peasants respect a legend. And you call on your own, uh, your renown to uh, convince them to action. Which uh, is exactly what you need to uh, lead a rebellion. Alright, so the next day dawns cool and clear. 
those smoke from the smoldering smoldering uh, ruins of your home still blackens the distant horizon. You have a bounty on your head, doubtless, and it will only grow should you continue to evade capture. Meanwhile, pursue will come, likely in the form of Baskervilles, the sheriff's special hounds. Oh, Baskervilles. <laughs> uh, Sherlock, right? Um, okay, so uh, the sheriff's uh, special hounds bred to the size of a horse. Dang. Um, okay, so for now, you have other concerns. You need food, shelter. Voices clamor nearby. A woman named Anna introduces herself and volunteers to help organize the survivors. Other refugees found you during the night. They have gathered what little they save from their home in the center of a camp, including a fair amount of gold. The people you rescued look to you for direction. The horizon calls, cold and clear. Alright, so uh, I need to find food, gather those who followed me, and we need to talk. Um, it's more like we need to plan, not so much we need to talk. Uh, I guess planning and talking is quite similar. Uh, distance is my friend, I travel. Uh, but traveling blindlessly is like seems like a bad idea. Sherwood beckons the dark safety of its trees, treaded with danger and mystery. Um, alright, so, uh, mm, hmm, maybe you should salvage, um, uh, maybe you should salvage some food first, right, and then head, uh, head over to, uh, Sherwood, or, um, uh, oh, this is definitely out, uh, all right, let's let's uh, go with democracy, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I must go on alone. Uh, right, but where can we go? Lord Woodbridge. Oh, I don't remember the story. Um, is he a good guy or uh? Yeah, I don't remember. Um, how about let's try Sherwood Forest. And neither will we. Uh, the forest is haunted. The chorus of voices rises. I forgot to read the previous paragraph anyway. Um, a chorus of voices rises from your followers and you quickly realize that they will not follow in you into Sherwood. Alright, so... Uh... Alright, so ask them to wait here. Not a very good idea, right? Let's let's just go all of them. Oh wait. Uh, you cross a hill and uh, wait wait. Let me see. This is an opportunity to spend your resources, gold, renown, men to access special options in the game. Um, gold and renown are used uh, while your men will return slowly from uh, their assignments over time. The cost of the uh, option is detailed in parentheses after the text and will be deducted from your total after you make your choice. Um, huh, I don't recall seeing, uh, uh, costs just now, prior to making the decision. Um, but anyway, um, uh, if you do not have the resources required to choose a particular course of action, the choice will be read and inactive. Okay, so you crest a hill and Lord uh, Woodbridge, uh, Proud fortress comes into view, banners snapping in the wind. Your people begin uh, running, overjoyed at the prospect of refuge. Then Anna steps into a rabbit hole, twists twist her ankle. You stay behind to help her. Riders sally from the gates and surround your people, revealing themselves to be men of Nottingham and in the sheriff's employ. Oh my goodness. They don't notice you and Anna on the hill and you slink away unseen. Robin, Anna looks at you. I have family in Nottingham. They'll shelter me. I will work to free our people who have done nothing wrong. It is you the sheriff wants, and you he will pursue. Fly far, fast and far. She gives you a long, lingering hug. I will miss you. Alright, so... Uh, Alright... Alright. I barely know how to read Robin, but I'll do as you ask, and I shall be more careful in uh, the approach. Uh, Godspeed. Anna watches your departure, silhouette against the brazen sky. Then she's gone. You leave Woodbridge uh, lands alone. 
I should have gone by myself instead of bringing all my people there. Um, and consider your options. Your eyes track across uh, the landscape. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, watching for signs of the sheriff's men. There, a flash of white against the cerulean sky. Uh, a horse with sparkling horn that rises from its forehead and grazes on a nearby hilltop. Dang, a unicorn. Uh, Alright, the unicorn's nostrils flare. Catch your scent. Uh, it fixes you with a gimlet eye, just beyond arm's reach. Are you a virgin? The beast sp speaks soft, feminine, and clear in the king's English. Uh, uh, okay, of course. I hope you're saving yourself for true love. The unicorn angles its uh, horn towards your heart. Perhaps we shall meet again. Um, oh, you, you have been granted a measure of grace. When you find yourself down and out or need a little extra help, you might have the opportunity to choose a grace option. Um, while there are sometimes alternate solutions uh, to a situation, grace options will always help you out of your current situation in the best possible way. Uh, but be warned, uh, grace can be used once and will not return before the turning of the season. Okay, right. Uh, okay, so the unicorn rears up on its hind legs and vanishes to the passing of a, week, uh, of a cloud. No sign is left. Uh, left on the return of the sun. You shake your head and continue on your way, left only with a lingering sense of wonder. Yeah. Alright, let's find some food. Your eyes travel over the, over the rolling hills, uh, track signs of isolated farm steeds. Uh, the year is still young, but there is bounty to be had if you know where to look. The new green crowns of Sherwood Forest rise not half a league off. Uh, the King's Forest, full of deer and other game. Uh, begging for food, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I brave Sherwood Forest, there will be venison tonight. Uh, let's just try with the safe option, foraging. So you spend several hours uh, gathering nuts, berries, and eatable ferns from uh, among the nearby hills. When you finish, you have enough food to last uh, several days. Without warning, a white heart bursts from the trees, followed swiftly by a large grey wolf. Um, Okay, if I kill the deer, I need to kill the wolf as well, right? Alright, let's let's do this. The deer is mine. Uh, the heart bounds sideways at the last moment and your arrow skips off the ground in front of the wolf, who skids to a stop. Not terribly sporting, was it? You imagine the wolf's uh, sarcastic voice. That was going to be my kill, and look, it's gone. He's right, the heart vanished through the underbrush. The wolf darts back, uh, darts back into the trees. Alright, let's go to Sherwood. Haunted, haunted or not, uh, Sherwood will offer you safety from the sheriff if it doesn't kill you by other means. Given time, you may even find means to strike back against the sheriff for what he has done. You move deep into the forest, fighting bramble and thorn, when there comes the dreadful baying of the wind. The sheriff has released his hounds and they are nearly upon you. Let's climb up a large tree, right? Your heart is pounding. Oh, checkpoint triggered. Nice. Major events and turning of the seasons will trigger a checkpoint. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah, this is a lot better than um, a basic game book. <laughs> there are actually checkpoints. Um, okay, so. Your heart is pounding, your breath comes ragged in your lungs, your clothes are tattered and torn from the thickets and brambles, yet still the baying of hounds is at your heels. You've made it to Sherwood Forest, the King's Forest, the no man's expanse of untamed wilderness uh, beyond Nottingham, yet still the sheriff's hounds rush to bring you ground, uh, to ground, Bescaville hounds as large as a horse. Uh, let them come. Ooh. Yeah. It gives off a vibe like uh, the what the three hundred Spartans, but this time it's just you alone against um wolves. Uh, sorry, dogs as large as a horse. Uh, fairy ring. Uh, yeah, 
I'm not that superstitious, so I don't think this will work. The river might actually work. Because dogs, well, they, I guess they are like cats, right? They don't like um, getting wet. Fighting is, is going to fail because dogs are, especially Shrein ones, right? They are superior when, uh, when it comes to hunting down their prey. So, yeah, let's, let's try the river. You push away from the tree, force uh, your trembling legs into motion once more. Step by step, you hear the hounds crash closer, the sound of an approaching thunderstorm. Then, the ground isn't where you expect. Your feet find only air, and you fall head over heels into a dark, the deep, deep dark hollow. Huge, slavering, black as coal, teeth like ivory daggers reach for your throat. You scramble to your feet and collapse. A sharp pain spikes up your ankle and the Bescoville hound lunges again. A wolf crashes into the hound, drives it into the wall of the hollow. There's a snarling ball of fur and fangs, and the wolf is in turn thrown away to land at your feet. You meet the wolf's golden eyes and swear he winks, as if to say, now might be a good time to run, human. <laughs> no reason to die alone. Uh, yeah, you're injured, so you shouldn't fight. Uh, uh, I don't think I'm gonna survive this. Oh, but I'm gonna just leave the wolf. Ah, okay, let's let's just do this. <laughs> the tip of your bow sinks into brittle leaves and soft loom as you drag yourself to your feet. Drag your sword free and hop to the wolf's uh, side. The hound lo lowers its head and growls. It does give off a bit of a like um. A Game of Thrones feeling, right? Because uh, if you recall the Starks, or maybe you don't know Game of Thrones, but the, um, there's a like a house Stark, and uh, they kind of like a, I, I guess you can call it a superpower. They they have this um, connection with uh, white wolves. So yeah, uh, apparently uh, Robin Hood is a Stark now. Okay. So, alright, 300 pounds of muscle, jaw, jaws, and uh, death. Wolf raises his hackles and you imagine his speech. Your blade has better hit the heart. Both of them. There's a yelp from beyond the hollow. The hound raises its head to the sky, turns, and vanishes into the forest. A unicorn stands proud on the crest of a hill. Silhouette. Uh, silhouette. <laughs> in, I, I, okay. Uh, in the last light of the sun, it watches you. Then, in the blink of an eye, both creatures are gone. All right. So you got allies. Nice. So this is deeper in the forest than you've ever been. But someone else was here first, and not so long ago. Uh, I don't, uh, maybe I might bump into Marianne, right? Uh, the love interest for uh, Robin. Um, this one is probably Sherry's man, so I'm not gonna go there. Especially not when I'm injured, so uh, someone came, oh, book. This is probably John, right? Hey, no, no. Uh, Timothy, the, the priest, maybe, no? Okay, let, let's just go <laughs> and find the noble woman. Okay, so you step through the wood, uh, carefully tracking a scrap of cloth. Here, a button, there, and run straight into a young woman. Your heads collide. Goodness, a noble woman sits on the ground opposite you, rubbing her head. Her, baskets, uh, her basket of raspberries is overturned at her side. I am so very sorry. A pair of ladies in waiting scurry around the rep's berry bushes. My lady, are you alright? Quickly, come away from this hooded ruffian. Nonsense. The noble woman rises, brushes down her skirt, and tucks a strand of dark hair behind her ear. We were both out gathering dinner, and we tr forest travellers must stick together. It takes a peculiar type of person to brave Sherwood Forest. She regards you curiously. 
Ah, nice, Marian. Okay, so she regards you curiously and offers her hand. I am Maid Marian of Woodbridge. The sheriff of Nottingham imprisoned my father and seized my family lands and announced his intention to marry me. By force, I and my ladies in waiting fled into the forest to avoid capture. Brave woman. All right, now... If I were to hazard a guess, and I am an excellent judge of character, I would say you are a lord of Loxley. I heard the sheriff seize your lands just the other day. Uh, that's a good guess, but not quite right. Yeah, who are you trying to fool? Okay, so you're good. That's quite correct. Uh, I smile. You can call me Robin. Alright. Well, uh, we've been nearly neighbours our entire lives. I'm uh, simply embarrassed we've never met in person. Marian drops into a curtsy. I was daughter to Earl Thomas of Woodbridge before the sheriff did the same. She looks around at the trees. Will, S Will Scarlet, the reclusive king's warden, guards this forest. If you can find him, gain his support and that of his men. Oh, ho, all right. And then the nobles of the, nobles of the realm. Uh, she looks away. I get ahead of myself. One thing uh, at a time, and that's dinner. Um, I have to say, she appraises your pet. You look com comfortably supplied for an extended stay in the forest. I'm impressed. She checks the sun. Come on, uh, camp is nearby, and it's getting late. Uh... Oh! Nice. So there's kind of like a gender band here. You can choose to play. Our, uh, I mean, Robin Hood can be a woman or a man, but it's a lord though. So uh... all right. Let's let's go with the gender band version. <laughs> this would be nice. So you are, Marian smiles. I would have been just as quick to take up that charade uh, had my father not insisted on having a proper daughter. Uh, she chuckles and shakes her head. Nice, look, the image uh, changed. Um, so it's good to know someone manage it, uh, though I suppose it doesn't really matter now. We are uh, forest refugees. Now, come along. So Rosalind and Matilda prepare dinner. Alright, so that night, Marion joins you around the campfire with a small plate of berries and roast uh, mushrooms. One of the maids, Rosaline, is a capable healer, and your injured ankle is now comfortably snug in a makeshift splint. Packed with a poultice of mushrooms and moss you have never heard, be heard of, uh, she swears it, it'll be better by morning. Rosaline's been with me since I was a child. Uh, Marion checks your dressings. She has served me well, yet I wonder if she isn't meant for greater things. She pauses, spoons you some berries. Uh, we've been wandering these woods for days without success. I'll admit I've given up hope of meeting anyone. That we met you is the first, uh, is the first, mo uh, first bit of uh, luck I have had in some time. Uh... Why is the sheriff determined to marry you? My family is an old one with ex extensive lands and titles. With our marriage, the sheriff could legitimize his claims of nobility and even aspire to the throne. Uh, were Prince John to be inconvenienced? Uh, does Prince John know about uh, this plan? I doubt it. Uh, Marian tosses another log on the fire. The sheriff will be a faithful lackey until he has me in his arms, which I have determined shall never happen. She fingers a small dagger at her belt. Okay, um, let's not go there <laughs> yet. Um, peace, Marian. So long as I live, you'll not be married against your will. Yeah, be the hero. Why not? <laughs> Marian gives you a tight smile. I like to hope so. Alright, so uh, you mentioned Will Scarlet. Indeed, Marion nods to herself. I had high hopes of encountering, uh, encountering Sir Will Scarlet. As the king's warden, he watches over the forest from a fortified, fortified uh, tower in the deep wood, which dozens of uh, highly trained uh, men at his command. Trusted and respected throughout the land, he could face down the sheriff and his lackeys. He sounds like a real hero. Yeah, I've heard stories about him since I was a child. Uh, can you tell me the, about the courts? I've only heard stories of all those high lords. 
Marianne, Marianne, uh, oh yeah, okay, so your forest defense, blah blah blah, blah have uh, effect on the man, renown, uh, you gain with the turning of the seasons, as well as the ability to raid the sheriff's tax caravans, their long term investments uh, in the future of their struggles. Alright, nice. Alright, so Ma Marianne brightens, it, it would be my pleasure. She launches into stories of her days in uh, Richard's uh, court, and while there are enormous uh, feasts and fancy dresses, she focuses most upon is uh, the ceaseless gossip and backbiting between the nobles. You don't doubt that Marian's political skills are razor sharp. A wolf howls nearby, and one of the ladies in waiting shrieks. Shrieks. Yeah. Rosalind, Marian says, says, come sit by the fire. What's troubling you? My lady, it's just that we came here to find uh, Warden Will Scarlet, but no one's seen him in years. I've, I'm starting to think that he no longer exists. You have a point, Marian concedes. But what of it? Uh, the forest is vast. Don't give up hope. We'll find him yet because I, uh, I've noticed that uh, uh, kind of like a bunch of people uh, went past uh, a part of the forest earlier, so maybe it, it might be him. So okay, so we can't keep uh, wandering aimlessly with all that uh, the sheriff has done, with everything he continues to do, it needs to stop before more people are hurt. Mm. Alright, so stop the sheriff's men, show the people that someone out here cares. The people will follow. There are mercenaries out there, warriors displaced by the crusades, with them we have an army in no time. Rob from the rich, give to the poor. The people will love us when we return what's been taken from them. Meet with the nobles. They don't like the sheriff any more than we do, and they can quickly raise an army if they've, they've found something to rally around. But nobles are usually spineless, right? Uh, so, yeah. I'm liking the first option. And this one is like the generic option. <laughs> so, yeah, Lady Robin of Loxley. The name change. Uh, mercenaries, they are just tools, right? Alright, let's go with this one. Inside a peasant revolt? No, Robin, forgive me for saying this, but the nobility are born to rule. They can't overturn the way of the world because of a few bad men. Please tell me you won't do such a thing. Perhaps you're right. A general revolt will kill innocent and guilty alike. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, thank you. Do you have any other ideas? Um, Alright, let's just go with this one. <laughs> so it boils down to money. With money, we can, uh, we become famous or powerful. Marian's, uh, Marian's silent for a time. I have a little. Gems uh, sewn into my skirts. It's a start. Marian takes a few steps, pauses at the edge of the firelight. I'm glad we ran into each other. You are so much, uh, so much more capable in these woods than us. Suffice it to say, I've informed uh, Matilda and Rosalind that they are to obey you without hesitation while traveling the forest. I trust you to keep us safe. I'll do my best. That's all I ask. Marian walks into the night. Good night, Robin. You have a noble lady and her maids in tow. What could go wrong? A lot. <laughs> so the next morning, uh, you wake. Oh, okay. So you're uh, Lady Robin of Loxley, scion of the Loxley line. Um, you have a natural relationship with the noble, uh, nobility, and an instinct for manipulating larger events. You gain an additional fifty renown every time you gain renown. Okay, nice. Um, and are adept at gaining power from politics and negotiation. Huh. Okay. Let's let's move on. Alright, so I have zero men, but I have a ton of gold and renown. Alright, so you wake to a flurry of activity, uh, Marian's bustling uh, about the camp, packing a few possessions and stamping out the fire. I was up early, couldn't sleep, she says, by the way of uh, explanation. Went for walk, and who did I spot but Guy of Gisborne? She crouches down to look you in the eye, the sheriff's cousin and master of the hounds himself, camped right over that ridge. The baying of hounds echoes uh, through the forest. The Baskervilles are on the move, but more, not towards us. They are hunting something else. Uh -huh. Right, so should we kill Guy or should we kill the hounds? Yeah, let's just kill the guy. 
Marion instructs uh, her ladies in waiting to continue on ahead and keep moving into the forest if you don't catch up before dawn. Guy is camped uh, in the shelter of a large log. You have a perfect view of his red dub doublet and tri a trimmed goatee as he, he hunches over his campfire brewing tea in the chill damn morning. Uh, yeah, talking is not gonna work. He's uh, the sheriff's guy true and true, right? Um, actually, I would like to steal supplies. Uh, let's just go all aggressive. I attack. Guy must have caught some sign of movement from the corner of his eye. He throws himself to the side and your arrow sinks into the dirt. Have at thee. He he's upon you with astounding speed. His blade rings against yours like the to tolling of Sunday bells and he kicks out, knocking you to the ground. You kick back, sending hot tea into his face. Suddenly, Guy lets his his sword drops uh, drop from his hand. Marian is behind him, her dagger across his neck. Marian, he squeaks, lovely to see you again. And Loxley, what a pair you make. What shall we do with him, Robin? Marian asks, uh, tightening her grip. Guy of Gisborne led the sack of my home. He looks upon him with barely concealed disgust. He surrendered, however, and by the rules of chivalry, we must release him. Ha ha ha! Alright, let him go naked. That'll be nice. Uh... Okay, let's rob him. Uh, your bounty has increased. Nice. You leave Guy naked and miserable in the middle of the forest. His jury... Uh... Yeah, there's a typo here, right? Uh, weighing down your pockets. Guy will take this insult to heart. Marion counsels like a dog with a bone. He'll hold this grudge until he can bury us in the ground. Once he finds some pants, he she stifles a laugh. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so you're in camp, be it on the road, or in a hidden cave, or behind fortress walls. Camp is a moment of safety from the sheriff's men. While in camp, you may have the opportunity to use uh, resources to advance your cause and engage in conversation, feverless or otherwise with your allies. Alright, nice. So Marian forges through the forest, her skirts up uh, around her knees, and her maid Matilda fluttering after her, clucking <laughs> disapprovingly. Um, Finally, she stops beneath a spreading oak. This will do, she declares. We can camp here. Time to figure out our next move before the sheriff sets more men on uh, our trail. She spreads out the small map and uh, several pieces of paper and begins making uh, notes. Okay, uh, um, Marian looks thoughtful. We've uh, escaped the sheriff's men. Uh, this is our chance to set the seeds of resistance. For that, we need to stop running. She taps her map, a vast emptiness simply labelled Shearwood. This is the deep wood, said to be home to fairies and bogarts, dragons and trolls. Whatever the truth, the sheriff's men don't dare set foot in there. If we can establish a base, we'll be safe, at least for a while. There are three things we need to accomplish to make that a reality. We need a fast, defensible way in and out of the deep wood. We need to make contact with the King's Warden. And we need to clear competing bandits from the area. I'm not certain where to start. Alright, so what's a good way in and out of uh, deep wood? Between Nottingham Street... Oh, take aim when there is... Uh, you can always back out of a take aim choice without consequence. Uh, take... Aim. Okay, so I can back up, alright? Mm, okay, so between Nottingham's uh, trade routes or routes, uh, routes and the deep wood is a river here. She uh, sketches on the map. If you are going to disrupt the sheriff's activities, stop his tax, collect tax collectors and the like, we can't uh, afford to always take the long way around. I heard there's a crossing here. She makes a hatch mark. But it's supposed, supposedly, uh, supposedly guarded by a delegate of the crown. If we can secure that crossing for ourselves, perhaps convince this guardian to join us, we can use it to be uh, in and out of the Nottingham area before the sheriff uh, knows we're there. She ponders her map. I don't know a good path from within the boot. We'll be better off approaching from the outer forest, though we are likely to run afoul of the sheriff's patrols. Anything we can to throw them off our trail would be helpful. 
All right. Okay, so I'm going to try uh, this take aim option. Uh, I have some ideas to help evade the sheriff's men on the way to the river crossing. Marian nods. The area around the river crossing is large. Anything you do will uh, give us more time to explore. Alright, so she agrees. Nice. Uh, uh, I can pay a passing pig herd to misdirect any men he encounters. Okay, I can I can uh, lay several uh, false trails. I have ton of renown, so 50 is no biggie. Alright, so if anyone comes across a trail, they'll waste precious time uh, untangling the mix of marks and leads you laid down. You make a mental note to do this throughout your travels. Uh, should I do this? Uh, yeah, why not? The pig. Hurt's eyes uh, widen as he counts the gold into his hand. Absolutely, absolutely. Them sheriff's men won't know which way is north if they cross my path. <laughs> he shoots his pigs onward uh, through the trees. Alright. Okay, so we can uh, now uh, move on to secure the crossing. Uh, events are moving faster than I like. I can't tell you how, but time has a way of changing things and with the sheriff working to catch us, time is not always on our side. She laughs. That was perhaps a more complicated way of saying yes, the order matters. Alright, so um, we need an uh, easy way in and out and we need to clear uh, the bandits. Okay, so maybe we should... Oh, is there anything else we can do that might help our situation? We have a friend in the church, ah, Friar Tuck, yes, has reported sightings of ghosts uh, in the ruins of High Ever. He will appreciate if it if we could uh, investigate the situation before someone gets hurt, and before the sheriff uh, solves the problem in his own way. I realize this doesn't seem relevant to our situation, but we should not underestimate the support of the church. Uh, that's true, especially in that era at least. Um, so she marks the map, uh, located at an ancient crossroads uh, through the outer forest, however it's fairly easy to get to from uh, other nearby locations. So we can examine it uh, at our leisure. Mm -hmm. Alright, tell me about the King's Warden. The Scarlet family have been uh, wardens of the deep wood for generations. The latest scion, uh, William hasn't been seen outside the forest since Richard left for the Crusades. An alliance would be ideal, but at the very least we need his permission to operate in the, in the deep wood. We can't fight him and the sheriff at the same time. That's very true. Alright, so she brushes her hair out of her eyes. When you're ready to be your charming best, we should try to find him. Alright. Mm, bandits. The Black Wolf Bandits are a large organized force known to operate out of, out of the deep wood. They are led by a notorious Viking marauder, Harald the Grim, and are rumored to be in, in pay of the sheriff. Oh, we should get rid of him. Uh, the questing knight, Sir Pelinor, has promised his assistant if we help him drive the bandits from the deep wood. Mm -hmm. I can get a knight on my side. This would be nice. Um, okay, so Sir Pelinor is working against the bandits in this area. Marianne draws uh, an X on the map. When we are ready for a fight, we should meet him here. Alright, uh, getting Fry Attack to join the team would be nice. Um, Alright, so we should uh, go and secure the crossing first. Alright, so Marion rolls up her maps. Alright then, let's get moving. Robin, one of Marion's mates, uh, the younger with long scarlet tresses, catches up with you as you set out. I'm Rosaline, by the way. I wanted to make sure we are properly introduced. Uh, she looks like she's uh, about to say more when Matilda, the other mate, calls out. We'll talk later. Uh, she promises and runs off. Rosaline's boyfriend, much to Miller's son, was captured when he helped us uh, escape. Castle Woodbridge. Marianne watches the maid. I know she worries about him. She raises her skirts and strides across the clearing. Alright, let's secure the crossing. Ah, alright, so checkpoint. Uh, again, uh, if nothing changes. Okay, so we need to get to Deep Wood like, really, really quickly. And I have like 69% of daylight remaining. Okay, so shield forest 10 a.m. The sheriff's men uh, pick up your trail as you came around the edge of the forest. They number at least a dozen, not including hounds and horses, armor and weapons of cold, hard steel. 
I thought I misdirected them. Um, okay. Ahead stands the mist shrouded deep wood where 400 foot tall trees block the light of day and giants grind the bones of Englishmen to make their bread. For fear of their lives, the sheriff's men will not venture there. Between you and this dubious safety lies a cold, fast river, a down tree that serves as a bridge, and a bear of a man who calls himself Little John. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, Marin is the better ne negotiator. Let <laughs> she says basically the same thing. I say, man, let us pass. Not until you pay the toll. Little John blocks your path across the river. Five thousand gold? Seriously? That's highway robbery! Marion exclaims. We don't have that kind of money. We are crossing one way or another. Uh, yep. Little John raises an eyebrow, lifts uh, a quarterstaff in his hand. You and what army? Marion glances at the sun. This area is large, Robin, and just about everything takes time. We need to be careful uh, the sheriff doesn't catch up to us. This far into the forest, his price is unreasonable, naturally. Uh, but the day is warm and the river quiet. Perhaps we can convince him of the urgency of our passage. Uh, or lull him to sleep and sneak across. Marion sighs. If only I had my loot. Oh, so porific, which means um, it can induce a sleepiness. Um, uh, okay, so... Yeah, I like to discuss thing, uh, things over food, so let's do this. I'll tell Rosalind and Matilda to prepare themselves uh, as if we were at court. Um, give the signal when you're ready. The purple nightcap, of course. Uh, Marion snaps her fingers. It grows in the cold, damp, uh, in cold, damp places. The riverbank is too far open here, but we might find it somewhere nearby. Rosalie and Matilda will be ready with food, just in case. Certainly, Robin. Whenever you're ready, Little John watches you, patient. Little John passed up out his chest. Must I for less than five thousand gold and against the wishes of the king himself? Uh, what's wrong? Uh, extracting files, verifying files. Oh, I'm progressing too quickly, I think. Um, okay, so Prince John and the Sheriff sees enemies in Richard's uh, legacy. You're, you were appointed to this post by the king. That simple fact condemns you in their eyes. Uh, this will be nice. So I can recruit John to my uh, group. Keep talking, Lil John grips his quarter staff. You have my attention. Mm, nice. He's a very loyal uh, kingsman. Okay, so. The sheriff will send an army in here unless he thinks we are dead. The sun filters down through the trees, and a flock of ducks paddle furiously upriver. Little John stretches and runs his hands along the bark of his makeshift bridge. I cross my arms and look John in the eye. Uh... <laughs> what we start today will live on and inspire generations. We will be legends. It should be S, right? We, right? Um, not enough renown. Uh, uh, let's use grace, why not? You believe that, don't you? John chews on a blade of grass. Maybe I've gone daft, but you've got me believing it as well. Alright, cross as you will. I'll be at your side until the end. You can tell little John's uh, tense and worried. You notice him glance uh, anxiously upriver towards the ruins. Listen. He says, there's a shepherdess who often grazes her flocks up by the ruins. We were supposed to meet for breakfast, but she's 
uh, several hours late and I can't leave my post. If you find her and find out how she's uh, doing, I'll be grateful. I'll keep an eye out. Thank you. Lil John looks relieved. I worry about her, but no one but those goats around if uh, something should happen. Oh, we have no one, but okay. Uh, right, so who are you? Um, Lil John tasked by the wonder of Sher uh, Sherwood and the king himself to keep common folk out of the deep wood. Well, after a fact, Lil John scratches his neck. Comes by now and then. Oh, that means it's not a myth. Um, but I've got to make ends meet on my own. Oh, okay. So, by the bridge. Most times, she looks. Uh, he looks away towards uh, the forest. But it'll be grand. It'll be grand uh, to walk into these woods, those woods one day, and leave the bridge, bridges and poles behind. No sense in it, of course. A job's a job, but this is no life. John Greens, the deep woods a terrifying place unless you know how to handle it. I do, and I have a plan. See, I... He stops himself. Ooh, a man with a plan. Nice. He can help us, actually. Uh, Alright, so I, I'm, I don't regret using my grace for him. Anyway, uh, anyway, he stops himself. Uh, bah! You've got trouble and I've got business. I won't bore you with uh, dreams of what will never come around. Uh... <laughs> if you can pay, you're obviously not common, are you? Alright. Down uh, river, a narrow game trail uh, treads its way through thickets and boulders before disappearing from view. Up river, the land rises in a series of rolling hills dotted with crumbling ruins of ancient watchtowers and settlements. Behind you is the long valley that brought you to this crossing. The sheriff's men will have to follow you through a narrow defile or risk uh, losing the trail. Alright. Ah, uh, Long Valley. Ah, uh, I need to help John, right? So, head to the ruins. Uh, you climb a series of small hills. The trees become uh, shorter and spread further apart until the forest opens up around the grass-covered uh, uh, knoll. Toppled blocks of wood outline the foundations of an ancient fort and a small herd of goats grazes peacefully in the grass. The wind distorts sound uh, carried over the hills, but you definitely hear a woman calling for help somewhere. You think you spot a track, then you blink. It's gone. Or maybe it's just the wind blowing across the grass. You set out as before, following the woman's uh, voice on the wind. But this time, when it sounds like her voice is getting stronger, you walk in the other direction. Soon enough, you find a hidden hollow. A young, blonde-haired shepherdess sits in the hollow. An enormous stone slab blocks her way out. I'm so glad someone found me. The shepherdess scrambles to her feet. Here, I thought I'd be stuck alone with the goats and ghosts, uh, neither of whom have been much help. My name is Ellison, by the way. What happened? I was chasing one of the kid goats here when uh, the earth uh, shifted and that stone fell across my path. The kid uh, leapt out, but I'm afraid I can't jump that high. Uh, you and Marian anchor the rope with a little effort. Alison manages to pull herself over the stone and out of the hello hollow. Thank you so much. Alison gives you both big hugs. I need to go see little John before it gets too late. He's probably terribly uh, worried. Do you? The girl brightens. I was supposed to meet him at the river crossing this morning when I got stuck. If only he, he were here now. He could move this stone without any trouble. He, she sighs. He's so strong. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, I'm uh, My family lives just... Uh, Alright. They are indeed. Uh, there are probably Roman soldiers buried here, cursing this land, not to mention vengeful druids, mis mischievous fairies, and willow the weeps. Uh, when my family lives near uh, High Ever, they say there's the ghost of a great knight from King Arthur's day who watches over the fortress. Oh, ghost of a great knight. Might it be the warden, right? He's assailed by uh, evil spirits from the deep wood every night, and the echoes of their struggles are sometimes felt by you and I. That's probably what happened here, with this stone. I take your warning seriously. Alison nods. Uh, do not disrespect those who once live in the forest and you should be fine. She looks at the stone in her path. Uh, usually. <laughs> she gives you another hug. Thank you again. Uh, I, I, uh, I'd better go. She skips away across the hill and out of sight. Uh, um, uh, I know for a moment. Uh, 
Should I explore the ruins? Mm, I got so much stuff to do though. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's worth worth it. Maybe I will find some gold or something. Okay, leave this place. You consider options. There's a winding path that leads back to Lil John and the river crossing. Um, the wood cuts uh, cut steeply into the valley and towards the defile. Uh, you can swing down through the woods along a game trail to reach areas of the forest downriver from the crossing. Yeah, I think I should return because I need to uh, do something else. Uh, Lil John and Alison share a drink by the fallen tree trunk. Lil John uh, nods to you. Are you ready to cross? I'm ready to cross the river. Lil John gestures, uh, gestures, gestures across the river after you. Let's get out here before the sheriff's men arrive. You know, I don't often have guests uh, in the deep wood, other than uh, Squire Will Scarlet, the warden of Sherwood, that is. Okay, so, uh, one stone, two birds, right? Two birds. Uh, so, Lil John leads you across the bridge. Come along, I'll treat you to dinner. Alright, the next day already. Alright, so Lil John bids farewell to Alison and leads you confidently into the gloom shrouded deep wood. Now you got a guide. That's cool. Uh, Alright, so the sun slowly sets in the world beyond. By day, the deep wood can be black as night. It pauses by a small pool at the edge of a grey stone cliff. It's only after sundown that the lights come out. It's, it's actually quite pretty. Um, okay, so up and up, you crane your neck, uh, neck backwards until the world, the world spins around you. The trees of the deep wood are transformed into pillars that hold the sky, and the sky is full of stars. The stars, they're moving. These are fireflies. Let's say nothing. There are times for talk and there are times to watch and wonder at the world. This is the ladder. You recognize the wheel, uh, the, the light as uh, wheel of whips. Oh, okay, so no, not fireflies. Uh, and the tails vary, casting them as saviors or tormentors to those uh, lost in the forest. But whatever their nature, they are said to be drawn to sadness and tragedy. Takes your breath away, doesn't it? Lil John clears his throat. Ignore the whips uh, if they come close. That's my advice. The cliff, you now realize, is no cliff but an enormous tree whose trunk is over 50 feet wide. The old oak, Marion, runs a hand along the bark. I've always heard stories. Uh... <laughs> Are we supposed to climb this? Uh, Lil John trips a hidden catch and a rope ladder tumbles down from above. Welcome to my home. You climb a hundred feet up the old oak, its branches as wide as a country road. Lil John shows you a small collection of buildings connected by simple walkways. It's comfortable, uh, comfortable, hidden, and clearly only a fraction of what the great tree and those around it can support. You can house a village up here. Marion looks around, awestruck. Aye, Lil John sets out platters of bread, cheese, and dried meat on a low table surrounded uh, by cushions. Or an army. Ah, you're giving me ideas, Lil John. Alright, so uh, there's a half and a grunt, and a bear joins you on the branch. Uh, Lil John tackles the bear and wrestles him onto his back, rubbing his tummy. Robin, Lil John greens. I like you to meet Sir Bedivere, an old friend of mine. <laughs> so people keep uh, dogs as pets, and Lil John keeps bears as pets. <laughs> okay, so the bear yawns in your general direction, though he looks far more interested in your dinner. I pass the bear a bit of meat. Sir Bedivere licks it up. He continues on to lick your arm and then your face. Lil John laughs. Come here, Bedivere. No eating our guests. Uh, he winks at you. He hasn't eaten a guest in over five years. Don't encourage him. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you don't have to tell me that. <laughs> okay, so uh, mist gathers between the trees, pooling in the hollows of their massive roots. Tendrils stretch and reach across open ground to form a net of silken fog. I lean back against the old oak. Actually, I, I prefer not to speak, but... Um, 
I could tell Lil John levels an appraising stare over the table. You move like one born to the woods. It's in your blood. Why did you climb, Robin? Marian runs her hand along the oak's uh, smooth bark. When I was a child, I would do anything to get away from my governess. But I was always afraid of heights. She smiles. I still am. Uh, when I was as high as I could climb, I pretended I was you, a dragon, or uh, oh, uh, one fire mill. No, no, that raised me as so Tuck was his name, Fire Tuck. <laughs> I climbed trees because he was too fat to follow me. <laughs> uh... There are many friars, but I've only heard ever heard of one Tuck, Marian Knotts. He currently ministers to the poor and the dispossessed uh, in Nottingham. Those displaced by the Crusades and uh, Prince John's uh, endless taxes. It was only by his warning I was able to escape when the sheriff seized my home. We should make contact with him as soon as we have the chance. Little John speaks around a, a mouthful of food. He could help us uh, gather support against the sheriff. You settle down to a hearty meal and the talk slows as you eat your fill. By the time you are sated, you realize you are sitting alone at the table. Alright, and all soups ahead, banking soundlessly between the branches of the old oak. I have to say, Lil John leans back against Sir Bedivere and crosses his arms behind his head. It's mighty grand to have guests for once. Not so much. John is silent for the space of a deep, long breath. Time enough for him to take a deep, long drink. Not ever, really. You have other friends, right? Like Squire Will? I would, wouldn't call him much of a friend. We have a different view of the world, he and I. John sighs. He'll be a uh, lord of the wood, but the deep wood has no lord. It is and always be a free land. He looks away. I appreciate you finding Alison. I should have gone looking for her myself, but a part of me thought, uh, hoped, she decided not to visit today. Things aren't going so well between us. You and Alison aren't meant for each other? She wants me to move into a family's farm. She wants me to leave the deep wood, and I... Little John spreads his hand. <laughs> the deep wood is your home, and it's as much a part of you as your beard. Asking you to leave is asking you to be someone you're not. Yeah, that's true. That's right, John slaps his tie. And there's no way I'll stop drinking. No way I'm shaving my beard. Uh, this seems a bit... <laughs> too much for like a first meetup, right? Okay, so tell me about yourself, your family, John. They wandered away into the forest. Bit of year here's, uh, uh, here is all I have left. John collapses against the bear. Don't worry, Barry, I won't wander away. I won't heed the call of the whips. I promise you, I promise you that. My thanks, Lil John trades you his cup for the jug and drains the contents in one long gulp. Two brothers, James and Eric, and three sisters, Laurel, Myrtle, and Rose. Laurel and Myrtle were older, which is where I learned my uh, feminine sensibilities. She holds out his hand. I'm sure you didn't notice, but I take care of my nails. Anyway, we had a homestead deeper in the forest called it uh, Troll Valley because of all, of all the little rivers and little bridges. Uh, it's hard to notice anything with the whips uh, spiraling around uh, John, spinning closer and brighter, and enveloping him in a transfixing cocoon of light. It would be nice to move, to act, to speak, but the light is so pretty. Uh, Sir Bedivere rears up on his hind legs. He roars and swats the whips away with his claws. The entire tree goes momentarily dark. You can move again. The whips uh, dance through instant bow. I think that's uh, pronounceable. <laughs> uh, and Sir Bedivere is settled down as if nothing untoward had happened. Maybe during the day, Robin. John stares into the fog. It's not good to talk too much uh, loss of too much loss while the whips are listening. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> so thanks for the chat, John. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Robin. John and Sir Bedivere disappear among the bo boss of the old oak. Uh, because Rosaline mentioned that uh, she wants to talk to me, so 
I will just talk to her first. They are so pretty, aren't they? Rosaline stares into for entranced uh, by ribs floating just beyond her reach. Does it tickle you if they touch you, or do you think they might burn? <laughs> uh, they are malicious spirits, Ross. You should step away from them. Uh, or what? Rosalind turns on you. Do you think I'm such a silly girl that I'll dive in the fog, never to be seen again, or that I'll be taken by the Grey Witch? Let me dream my little dreams, Robin, before you cast them in chains. Uh, wait, back up. Who is the Grey Witch? She's just a, just a story, a lot of stories actually, but they are all different. There's a common thread though, uh, be she woman or fae, cursed or blessed. I always liked the version where she was the daughter of Lancelot and Guinevere. Regardless, every story agrees that the Grey Witch, the Whips, and the Fog are in some way linked, uh, though it is debatable if she is uh, mistress or servant. Also, she's always attended my uh, musician of uncommon skill, Ellen Adele. Ross' hands, uh, Ross, uh, hand goes unconsciously to her belly. It's too early to know anything, of course, but yes, I think of, of, I think of him every day. I hope he leaves, and if he leaves, I hope his torments are not too severe. She bursts uh, into tears. I hope I haven't made a terrible mistake. Whips uh, draw close, circling above like vultures. Shh, don't cry, don't cry. You must think me a stupid silly girl. Uh, Rosaline sniffles and steps back, then throws herself into your arms once more. I nod, she speaks, and uh, your shoulder. Uh, I'll prove it to you, Robin. I promise, just not tonight. Uh, Rosaline steps back again and dries her eyes. Come on, let's join the others and leave the lights to their games. A single large flower opens on a nearby vine. Then another. Perfume fills the air and a branch is transformed uh, from spring to winter, covered length and breath in snowy white blossoms. I was thinking. Marion's face is freckled with light from the whips as she stares into the tree, stares up into the tree. The people need a hero, and if they are going to oppose the sheriff, someone like uh, St. George will give them hope. The mist now blankets the forest floor, thick, impenetrable. It's as if you were sitting high above the clouds. Marianne, what happened to your father? He was summoned to Nottingham to meet with the sheriff when he wouldn't uh, accede to the sheriff's demands. She stares into a cup. Uh, to give away my hand in marriage, he was arrested. The sheriff came from my home uh, soon after. The whips gather close, hovering uh, near her. We will rescue your father, Marianne. Really? She blinks owlishly, even when the people cry out for help, even with the sheriff, uh, even with the sheriff, is in your grabs. You walk away and save my father. Then, yeah, I don't think revenge is such a, such a good idea. I don't see why I have to choose. <laughs> I shall not abandon your father, Marian. I swear it. You clap hands, sealing your oath. The whips are spin high above and hold in a star pattern. The forest has witnessed your vow. Marian, I glance apprehensively at the whips. Have you heard of the Grey Witch of the Deep Wood? An infamous, infamous denizen of the Deep Woods, if the stories are to be believed. I. She closes her eyes. They say she used to guard the misty Isle of Avalon, but now stalks uh, the fog shrouded ways beneath the deep wood trees. Accompanied only by her courtier, friend and jailer, Ellen Adele, uh, whose music keeps her forever young and forever trapped uh, within the forest. When her eyes open, they, brief they are briefly devoid of colour. I won't say more. Not now. She looks away. <laughs> Marian, you know you're quite pretty. Okay. This is a romance option, right? <laughs> About me making all these decisions. Uh, silence uh, drops between you like a net cast in twisted rainbow light. Whips float close, so close you can almost touch. Who would lead us instead, Robin? Marian focuses on you. There's no one here right now, but if I find someone... Uh... I'm afraid you're stuck with the tough job, Marian says, but we will be here to support you through thick and thin. We can't help the people if we don't save ourselves first. 
I know, I just wanted to remind myself about the common folk, what they are suffering. It's so easy to forget about them sometimes. Indeed, what we do, we do for them. It's good of you not to forget the little people. My thoughts exactly, Marian smiles. She touches your arm lightly. Robin is late. I'm off to bed. I'll see you in the morning. There's no one else around. Your thoughts turn to the tap. To the attack on your home, the sheriff's men slaughtered, uh, slaughter, should be slaughtered, right? Uh, slaughter your family and there's the sheriff striding over the trash hole through blood and flames. Find the Loxley child and bring her to me. Ha, huh, how does the sheriff know that, uh, you are a lady because you have been masquerading as a, uh, a son, right? A guy? Something like Mulan? Um... Anyway, he barks, uh, kill the rest. It could happen again. The sheriff's trained uh, soldiers, the fire and the sword, it could happen again, and it would be your fault. Melancholy, you, tr you trace your way over uh, the branches of the old oak to bed. Alright, so, uh, no checkpoint? Okay. Uh, I guess we'll continue then. Uh, you meet Marion by the base of the old oak the next morning. Let's get down to business, Robin. What's our next step? Uh, we need some people, so we need to meet with uh, Will Scarlet. Oh, wait. We need to get fire attack, uh, right? So, let's prepare to deal with the bandits. Alright. The Black Wolves are well established uh, in Sherwood. Sir Pelinor is an redoubtable uh, knight, but anything we can do to tilt the fight in our favour will surely be appreciated. I spend a little time making new arrows and refletching the old ones. Wait, making new arrows doesn't cost you gold though, because you know you're getting the resources directly from the forest. Um. Anyway. There's a message dropped here, uh, around here, sometimes used by smugglers and poachers. I pen letters with an account of the sheriff's attack on my home. People need to know the truth. Hmm, yeah, alright, why not? You tuck your messages between the strips of false bark. Word of the sheriff's unprovoked attack will spread among the peasants and hopefully help organize a resistance. <sighs> Should I do this though? Uh, yeah, why not? Every little bit helps, right? Um, you finish your work with a full quiver of quality arrows, more than you, you would uh, normally need in a day, but you, you'll be happy to have them for any extended uh, battles. Alright, so we are prepared to deal with the bandits, but I'm not going to do that first. I'm going to uh, investigate high ever. Uh, Marianne rolls up her maps. Alright then, let's get moving. The ruins of high ever rise from a lonely coal in a knoll. Coal? No. Um, okay. In the middle of the forest, great blocks of cut stone outline what was once a mighty forest fortress, now a collection of irregular mounds overgrown with grass and brambles. In the center of the fortress, you find an intact staircase, clear of dirt and vegetation that winds into the earth. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright, so for clues, uh, find some clues. You find a few spear points, some ancient leather from an old uh, tackle, and a couple horseshoes. A battle took place here long ago. You also find more recent hoof prints in the dirt, a scrap of metal with the seal of Nottingham's uh, forge. The sheriff's men have been here. Tuck says the ghosts have been reported at night. Marianne says, if there truly are restless spirits and not just some whips, there is probably a reason we should be ready if we plan to hang around after dark. Ah, I descend the stairs. The stairs lead to a short hallway that ends in a, in an empty room. Hold up, Marianne runs her hand across the stone wall and presses firmly on one of the blocks. A hidden door swings open. Shafts of sunlight cut through the hole in the ceiling, capture the slow dance of dust in the empty air. The secret hallway leads to an open chamber that has suffered little over the years. A long stone coffin sits on a raised dais. Da dais. Um, in the center of the room. The top of the coffin is carved with the image of an armored figure at rest. There's an inscription on the lintel, Marian points. This is the tomb of Dame es Elspeth, a knight of others' round table. Ooh. 
uh, something about this place feels wrong, but there's no obvious danger. He's a vampire! I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> Alright, so the crib is cold, quiet and cold. Um, look around the room. Three alcoves are spaced evenly along the walls. Uh, the first alcove is empty. The second alcove uh, holds a jeweled uh, drinking horn. The third alcove is empty. These alcoves are meant to hold gifts uh, for the dead, Marianne whispers, to support the fallen in the afterlife. It looks like there are several missing. She looks around the room. The coffin looks like it holds clues as, it, as to what was taken. Should I take the horn though? <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, ex I examine the coffin. The relief carved into the coffin shows an armored woman at rest. Her hair falls over her shoulders in twin braids. A bow is slung across her back. An ornate drinking horn is hooked uh, to her belt. An elegant sword is gripped between her folded hands. And her breastplate is decorated with a griffin uh, rampant. <laughs> uh, should I try to open the coffin? Uh, yeah, why not? Try as you might, the stone slab does not move. It's either locked or too heavy for you. Um, Alright, I'll take the horn. You feel a shiver round down your spine, but the horn is warm to the touch. Those jewels could be worth a lot of money. Uh, Marianne op op opines. It's the verb form of opinion, right? I don't know how to pronounce this, but anyway, opines, I guess. Um, if we could find the right buyer, in fact, I know a jeweler in Nottingham. I stole something from the crib. Alright, uh, so you climb back to the windswept ruins. Um, we may come back later, Marion. Let's go. Fair enough, Robin. Where to? Uh, let's let's meet with Will Scarlet. Marion rolls up a map. All right, then let's go. Um, the day passes without success. You return to the old oak to get some sleep before continuing your search for Will Scarlet in the morning. You wake you wake in the middle of the night. A group of whips are zipping through the branches above your head, making soft sushing noises as they brush against the leaves. A red whips. Uh, drops through the mist and bobs at eye level. It floats away until it's just a splash of crimson in the fog, then returns. It seems to want you to follow it. Meanwhile, a blue whip slinks up to you. It floats patiently, just out of reach. Friar Tuck told you tales of these whips, but you don't remember all the tales. The common ones are known by the colour. You are fairly certain that blue whips uh, lead to secrets. Also, the mere presence of whips uh, thins the boundary between waking and the realm of uh, dreams. Uh, red or blue? Blue leads to secrets, right? So I guess I'll follow the blue whips then. The light, uh, the lights woke me up, and I heard movement. Marion rubs her eyes and join you, joins you. Anyway, I'm coming with you because you've, because following whips uh, through the deep wood in the middle of the night won't end badly at all. <laughs> okay, so the blue whips uh, zips through the fox shrouded forest, leading you merrily over small streams and uh, across narrow, rocky clefts. You finally catch it, filthy, wet and cold, on top of a small hill. The fog breaks around the hill and even the forest keeps its uh, distance, affording you your first clear view of the sky since entering the deep wood. At the top of the hill, under the crypt's uh, moonlight, is a single standing stone covered in a wood. Uh, in in wood? What is wood? Um, Mary, Marian mutters under her breath. You catch the words, Grey Witch. I approach the standing stone. The design whirls and twists beneath the moonlight, glowing blue with the whip's light. Glowing blue from within, the standing stone has a secret to tell, if you know the key to unlock its meaning. Uh, I was schooled in Celtic uh, tradition. I add a drop of my own blood to the wood, linking its wisdom to mine. You see the deep wood, a cavern entrance set against a molted grey cliff. The entrance is blocked uh, by a heavy stone and painted with Celtic symbols of danger and warning. Three men, each wearing scarlet livery with golden falcon embroidered on the left breast, shove, shove the stone aside. From the mouth of the cave, below a deep, dense fog. 
Robin, Marion caref carefully draws you away from the stone. The flock is rolling up the hill and the whips is gone. We should go. Uh... Why these three men, though? <laughs> okay, so you fix your position relative to the moon. Oh, maybe these three men, uh, one of them are uh, is, is the warden? Huh. Okay, so you fix a position relative to the moon and the stars and make a guess about how to get to uh, how to get to your camp. You step back into the fog, but your sense of direction betrays you. You end up caught in a patch of brambles, and by the time you extricate yourself, Marian runs her hands through her hair. We are lost. You and Marian huddle together in the at the base of one of the giant deep wood trees. You doze fitfully, startling. A starting awake at every unusual sound and nearby movement until the sun burns the mist and the strange and uh, mysterious night into memory. Checkpoint triggered. Nice. Okay, so you wake up late uh, the next morning to your first clear day in the forest. Last night's mist has burned away and the sunlight sneaks its way through the branches of the impossibly tall trees. Uh, it's not dark as night beneath the both boss of the deep wood is dim, like standing within a tremendous cathedral, and every leaf a pane of stained glass. The smell of eggs and roasting meat alights on your nose. A few steps up and over a rumpled fold of land, you find yourself back at the old oak. John and Marion stand by a small fire cooking breakfast. Robin, Marion calls. Better hurry, Mary leader, or you'll miss breakfast. With food in hand and momentarily safe from the sheriff, you have something to be merry about. After breakfast, no quests or questions demand your attention. Even Marian thinks it would be a good day. Uh, it would be good to take a day to rest and recuperate before planning your next move. Well, almost nothing. Marian mends. Too much rest is boring. Besides, I think I figured out your vision from last night. There aren't many cliffs around here, but the bark of the old oak is uh, a similar color of grey, and uh, it's certainly large enough to hide a cave between its roots. Uh, she watches you take a bite of breakfast. A single bite. Come on, she grabs your hand and drags you to your feet. Let's check it out. <laughs> no, woman, I'm eating. Let me finish breakfast. Uh, I'll eat later. Let's go. You hunt around the base of the tree until Marian pulls aside a small patch of... Uh, small... A patch of small white flowers. Voila! She says, a stone stairway that descends into a hollow between two large roots. There's enough enough daylight for you to make out the bare stone room beyond, beyond the stairs. The room is empty and covered in dust except for a loot leaning in the far corner. Nice. Alright, so Marian joins you. Hey, look at this. She walks over to the loot and picks it up. There's gold filigree and mother of pearl inlay. This is a beautiful instrument. She strums a few notes. And still in tune. I still regret having to leave my lute, my own lute at home and I, when I fled from the sheriff. She sighs. Regardless, an instrument like this shouldn't be left down here in the cold and damp. I have no head for music. Take the lute, Marian. Marian caresses the instrument like a long lost child. Her fingers dance over the strings and fill the hollow with sound. She closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. Let's go. I'm terribly out of practice. After lunch, I think, will be a nice time to put this lovely uh, through its paces. A knight in full armor upon a snow white horse and wearing a red cloak rides around a nearby tree. The knight Oh, takes off his helmet and shakes out his long blonde hair. Meet Marianne, the man dismounts and kneels to kiss the back of her hand. I'm Squire Will Scarlet, Warden of Sh Sherwood. Allow me to welcome you to the deep wood. Marianne allows her hand to be kissed. You know me, sir? Indeed, your father sent me a miniature of your likeness some months ago, though I must say it did nothing to accurately represent uh, your charms. Dang, someone's flirting with her. Um, real smiles. I believe we. Uh, he hoped uh, we could, we would become acquainted. <laughs> Marian blushes. Uh, Will stands and gives you an appraising look. I have no idea. Two of the greatest beauties in all of England were pre present within my domain. May I inquire as to your name? Uh. I'm Lady Robin of Loxley. Excellent, we are equals and may discourse upon many things. Will claps his hands to business. It's only proper that you should come to my home for dinner tonight. Of course, Marian stammers. We'll, we would be delighted. Little John? 
will glances towards your companion. You know you you are always welcome in my home. I, John Rumbles, this one's I'll come, but not for you. Will shrugs. Oh, there's uh, some animosity between them, right? Uh, it would be my pleasure to join you. Will Scarlet leads you to a lonely tower huddled on a small rise that barely crests the nearby treetops. Crooked, stunted, and covered in ivy, it rises from the tumble-down ruins of what was once a much larger fortress. Will proudly proclaims that the fortress has been his, in his family for generations. It has withstood 17 sieges, 33 pitched battles, and it's quite homey uh, once you get inside. Would you care for a tour, or shall we straight, uh, straight away to dinner? I love a tour. Marian backs off to watch up, uh, wash up for dinner. Find my page boy Peter. Will instructs her. I'm certain some of my mother's old clothing will clothing will fit you if you would like to change. I too have seen the tower before. Little John says, "Have fun on the tour, Robin. I'm off to the servants' hall for for some ale." Uh, okay, so you embark on a tour of the tower, beginning with the grounds. A handful of sirs cultivate vegetables and tend a herd of pigs. A pair of sleepy-looking men at arms uh, stand by the front door. It hasn't, it hasn't always been this quiet, Will admits, somewhat sheepish, sheepishly. Dang. <laughs> King Richard requested uh, most of my retinue for the crusades, and just the other day, three of my guardsmen vanished into the deep wood. Thankfully, Sir Pelino wanders nearby so he can rest easy. A gleaming gold uh, bow hangs on both the tower entryway. Uh, what's that bow? Will shrugs. My mother brought this home one day. I confess, I never thought to ask uh, where it was from. He reaches up and hands it to you. I prefer the sword and shield, but you or Marian might get some use out of it while working against the sheriff. Here. Who is Sir Pelinor? He's a famous knight who wanders the kingdom, accomplishing important quests. Uh, Will pauses. At least I always thought he was famous, though if you haven't heard of him, anyway, uh, oh, you haven't heard of him, but I don't. Anyway, he's been at it uh, for as long as I can remember and always stops in at the tower when he passes through for a hot meal in the soft bed. Uh, what's uh, Sir Pelinor questing for this time? He says he was hunting a dragon. Will holds up his hand. Now, before you call me a lion, know that I sent uh, several of my men as his squire. Squires, uh, one returned with tales of tremendous success, and more if you will follow me. The tour continues with the treasury vault and the dungeon. The vault is full to the brim with gold. Dragon's gold, Will probably pronounces. My men said uh, there was a great battle and uh, though Sir Pelino drove the dragon off, a wandering knight had no need for of such uh, treasure. I've decided to store the gold here for the time being, in case uh, King Richard is captured. It should easily be enough to ransom a king. He reseals the vault behind a stout iron door and hangs the key on the wall. The dungeon has four cells. They are currently uh, used for storage, though one of them also holds a young man, uh, lounging amidst uh, boxes of old dishes and tattered tap tapestries. How are we doing, Alan Adele? Will inquires of his single prisoner. The man looks up. Well enough, Bonnie Will. Better if I were free if you weren't dining with uh, Le Gris. I'm sorry you don't get along, but my decision has been made. Uh, Will turns to you and gestures uh, to the stairs. Uh, shall we? Tell me about your prisoner. He calls himself uh, Alan Adele, a wandering minstrel who accepts and who accepted my hospitali hospitality for several days. Unfortunately, when his songs began slandering one of my guests, I was forced to imprison him. Now I shall not repeat the slander. Uh, Will gives Alan a signified look, nor shall he. In any case, he'll be released after my guest departs. Can I speak to the prisoner? Uh, briefly, Will glances towards the stairs. We need to finish the tour before dinner. Come close. Alan's, uh, Alan ages towards the bar. Uh, green shirt, brown trousers, they match his hair, his eyes, and capture your imagination. Let me tell you a story. I listen patiently. Like all good stories, this one is a lie, which at uh, its heart holds a kernel of truth. Ellen pauses. It is a story of the Grey Witch. Once upon a time, she was. She was? He fiddles with his fingers. I'm afraid I've forgot forgotten. Perhaps you can jog my memory? Uh, um, she was uh, 
the guardian of the misty Isle of Avalon. She was the most worthy of Avalon's guardian, a devotee of Athena. Grey Kate was possessed of exceptional weapon skill and impeachable honour, yet when she refused Morgan Le Fay's rite of passage in the wake of Arthur's battle with Mordred, she was cast out. She wandered the world for a reason. Alan snaps his fingers. There was a reason. Uh, in search of what she held most dear. Indeed, Alan's, Alan nods. She wandered the world in search of that which she, she held most dear. Her dreams. Yet Grey Kate was cursed never to sleep, and her dreams were forever out of reach. So she drifts, drifted from place to place until arriving here, and met a changeling boy with wood green eyes. His voice was as sweet as the songbirds, and he sang soft and slow until her eyes uh, finally drifted shut. From her dreams, uh, the magic of ancient times was drawn to the deep wood. He's actually talking about himself. Huh? Um, okay, so but Morgana was not uh, was not B was not B uh, was not so easily denied that B seems uh, a bit out of place. Um, anyway, Kate would suffer uh, for the delay cost uh, for the delay uh, cost Arthur, Arthur dearly. He fell into a deep slumber for, from which he would not wake. As she did to Merlin, she cast Kate into a magical slumber beneath the old oak. And the forest grew wild and dark. Oh, right. Will claps slowly. Bravo, bravo. If you promise to be good, I'll let you sing for your dinner. <laughs> now I have a tour to finish. Uh, Will parades you around the upper floor suites. Uh, to the roof, replete with uh, crenellated battlements. I take my breakfast here whenever time allows. Will walks to the edge and gazes out over the forest. The only rooms you have you haven't seen are the banquet hall, uh, where we shall eat uh, shortly, my chambers, and the library, which uh, needs work. He sighs. I'm leaving soon, you know, heading off to the crusades to bring uh, Richard back to set everything right. But... I shall miss this place. Then stay. England's problems run deeper than Richard's uh, presence can solve, and Sherwood needs you. He shakes his head. You echo every doubt I've wondered at myself, but my journey is not for me alone. He looks away. Come, let's get ready for dinner. Uh, Will shows you to a large uh, guest chamber. I have to change for dinner, and I imagine you might care to freshen up. In addition to Maid Marian, we will be dining tonight with an emissary of the French King, Catherine de Lune, and the, the Earl of uh, Huntington, Robert Fitzhugh, Hugh, Fitz, Fitzhugh, whose lands are about the western edge of uh, Sherwood Forest. I have had water drawn for a hot for a hot bath, and you are free to use anything in the wardrobe. My page Peter will fetch you in an hour. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with what I'm wearing, I think, in that. Uh, I examine the wardrobe for a change of clothes. The wardrobe has a number of outfits from Will's mother's time. You quickly identify three that are in reasonable condition, and from the days uh, when his mother, if the portrait over the fireplace is any indication, was of a more slender build. Uh, the first outfit is a slick dress of red and gold silk. It has a low swooping neckline and clinches tight around the waist before dropping from your hips in rippling waves. Ooh, a very sexy dress. Um, the second outfit is a white blouse, black lace, bodies, and a simple skirt made to look like uh, fallen leaves. Alright, simple and practical, I guess. Um, the third outfit is a blue and white uh, ball gown. Oh, a bit overdressed, don't you think? Uh, okay, so covered in stiff gold brocade, it has uh, full skirts, long sleeves, and a lace collar that rises high around the back of your head. Ooh, this is very regal. Um, you spot a fourth, a fourth outfit hidden be, be, uh, behind the rest. It's uh, menswear, a simple shirt and trousers of Lincoln green, though it should fit you. Uh, though it should fit you, the shirt laces up the front, and the assemble comes with an archer's hat and a peasant feather.
Okay, so I get an opinion on the clothes. Uh, Rosaline slides into the room and fingers the clothing and the wardrobe. This. Oh yeah, I actually wanted to choose the red dress. Robin, you're beautiful, but this places your charms on display for all to see. You look like a uh, little more than a common harlot. Don't wear it. Oh, okay. Um, she holds the archer's outfit up to her chest. Fetching, aren't I? Too bad this is what outlaws wear. Even women outlaws. Then again, that's what you are. So that's uh, there's truth in empathizing. Oh, I love it. Rosalind laughs and carefully lifts a lace fairy wing uh, from the back of the woodland bodies. If uh, there was every, ever a night to play the fairy robin. Uh, finally, she comes to the blue dress and sighs. This is ridiculous. She pokes at the boning in the bodice. This is nevertheless traditional formal garb. You'll barely be able to breathe, much less uh, move, but the nobility will respect you for it. <laughs> she leaves the woodland costume on the bed. I have to uh, help Marion. Whatever you decide, don't wear your old clothes. They are filthy. <laughs> traditional formal garb. Um, since uh, technically, you know, Robin uh, has been masquerading as a guy all this while, I think. Um, okay, now I'm deciding between the woodland bodies and the archer's outfit. But the red dress would be nice, right? <laughs> uh, I consider clothing from a social rather than aesthetic standpoint. <sighs> okay, so who are the guests? Um, there's like a French nobility, right? <sighs> Alright, I guess I'll go with the formal guard. But what if, you know, you get attacked? I'll go with the archery outfit. The page Peter leads you downstairs to the banquet hall. You are handed a goblet of wine and asked to be patient. The rest of the guests will arrive momentarily. Uh, Lady Marion of Woodbridge, Peter announces to you. The servants and the staff uh, boars head over the fireplace. Marion enters the chamber in a long white dress with gold embroidery and sleeves that trail nearly to the floor. Her hair has been washed and braided, and her green eyes sparkle when they meet yours. I suspect this is no simple dinner, Robin. The Earl of Hun Huntington represents the interests of many of Nottinghamshire's nobility, to say nothing of this mysterious uh, French emissary. And Will Scarlet is gathering support for some project of his. One way or, no or another, if we watch our words and impress Will and Robert, we might be able to take advantage of this. Likewise, Catherine is a cipher, but the favour of the French nobility should not be underestimated. Ha! <laughs> Alright, I regret choosing the, uh, the archery clothes. <laughs> she looks you over. Men's clothes, no less? You may as well shout rebellion from the rooftops. She sighs. You put well, a uh, wheel in a tough position, but it draws attention to the problems if, in Nottingham. If we play our cards right and press the issue, we may get the nobility to act now and not sit on their palms for another year. That's it. You look quite dashing. Uh, a broad-shouldered man with a neat beard and a really smile walks into the room. He's uh, wearing a long fur-lined coat. A cloak and a series of heavy gold chains around his neck. Marion nods to you and moves to the other side of the room as the Earl approaches. Robert Fitzhugh at your service. He bows, bows low. You must be Lady Lock Robin of Loxley. How do you do? Uh, <laughs> I make polite, pleasant conversation. 
Robert responds with his own innocuous comments. In spite of the light talk, by the time Robert excuses himself to speak to Marion, you have a solid opinion of his character. The Earl of Huntington seems honest, forthright, and more than uh, a little uh, risk adverse. Whatever happens in the world, if he keeps his head down and pays his taxes, he hopes everything will return to normal. Okay, so he won't uh, support the rebellion. Mademoiselle Catherine de Lune, uh, Peter declares. A young woman in a grey dress steps into the room. Her blonde hair is so pale as, as to be almost white and uh, is scattered in a crown braid around her head. She nods to you and her... Her lips curl into a slight smile. There are so many women in the room. We must hope that the men do not feel outnumbered. I am Catherine, and you are Lady Robin of Loxley, yes? I make a polite and pleasant conversation. You talk of uh, small small nothings for a time. Catherine is guarded, generally avoiding topics that touch on her personally, though you get the impression that she has spent a great deal of time exploring deep wood. Peter clears his throat. Squire Will Scarlet, Warden... Warden of the Deep Wood. Will enters dressed in his house colours of red and gold. Welcome everyone. The mist has risen and whips dart through the trees signalling the true onset of night in the Deep Wood. If you will, take your seats. Uh, servants begin bringing out small dishes, vegetables and game birds, pies and pasties. Stuff yourselves, my friend, Will says. Though be aware that this is only the beginning. We have a whole boar roasting on the spit downstairs as we speak. Uh, there is a polite smattering of applause. A, f a feeding final meal here in my home. At dawn, I leave for the Crusades, after escorting Mademoiselle Catherine to France, of course. Of course, Catherine nods. Uh, come now, Will. Uh, Robert Fitzhugh uh, pauses, a fork halfway to his mouth. You can't be serious. Your place is here as warden and steward of Sherwood. If you leave, your lands will be administered by the sheriff in your absence. And if you die, well, you have no hairs to replace you. Speaking of the sheriff, Marianne's mouth hardens into a thin line. I bring up the depredations of the sheriff against noble and commoner alike. Marian uh, joins you, though Robert is quick to point out that uh, past monarchs have not necessarily been uh, saints, uh, which is true. A general argument erupts over the legitimate uh, reach and overreach of kings past and present. There's a smattering of applause as the main course. Large slices of roast boar is brought out. Robert settles back in his chair, praises the meal and toasts Will Scarlet. You know, the Earl of Hun Huntington continues, I was thinking about all that gold you have sitting in your vault, Will. That kind of wealth attracts the, the unsavory, and uh, with most of your men missing or away on crusade, well, money! Marion slams her hand down on the table. You are here for money to pay the sheriff's flunkies, to live your comfortable life. No, girl. Robert snarls. I want money to free your father from prison. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> but what of the ransom for your good king? Catherine says quietly. If he needs it, there is uh, freedom in that vault. Mm. And uh, Marion's father is a criminal, yes? I speculate on what the sheriff and Prince John could want with uh, such heavy taxes and imply the possibility of a coup while riches away. The conversation turns dark and grim, with Will and Robert comparing notes and news from the rest of England. Even Marianne's voice is hushed, for what you say could be construed as treason. Catherine is quiet throughout, her only opinion that uh, little good comes from a war between siblings. Uh, Will claps his hands to get everyone's attention. I believe it, it is time for some light entertainment and dessert. I myself have no musical skill, but there is a minstrel, a certain Alan Adele, currently staying with us, and I shall fetch him if you so desire. Fetch the minstrel. Alan Adil enters the room with gusto. He bows uh, 
bows to the man and kisses the back of each uh, lady's hand. My lords and ladies, he looks to you and spreads his hands. What shall I sing? Sing the heroic ballad about the overthrow of tyrants. <laughs> sing a comic song about the miser and his money. Alan finishes his song to enthusiastic applause. He takes a brief, apl uh, brief pause and then sings an encore. Robin, Marian says, as everyone gets up from the table to stretch. The night is almost over. Now's our chance to press for action from Will, Robert and even Catherine. You made quite an impression during dinner, so I think uh, you should press our cause while I support your uh, arguments. Signal me when uh, you like my help. She, sh she shows you a discreet hand motion. Though I only have time to argue our case on a single topic before the evening ends. Now go. Take time to explore your options and consider your, your responses. Once committed, we cannot recant. We can't. Uh, well, Will Scarlet, uh, he doesn't have a lot of like men left, but uh, having his support would uh, be would be a lot. Uh, Robert is a coward, so I don't think I'm gonna get his support. Catherine. She seems like uh, she doesn't want to um, be a part of this, and uh, like involving another uh, uh, another country uh, seems uh, more like treason than not. So I guess uh, if Will is going to go on a crusade, then maybe we can use his goal. Um, so Robert joins you by the fireplace. This has been a fine meal, and you've been a fine host. He wraps up, uh, wraps his arm around Will's uh, shoulder. Have you given any more thought to that goal, my boy? Will pauses. The goal is uh, something of a windfall, and I suddenly, I, I'm suddenly less sure of its use. Robert, I know what you're going to say. He forestalls the Earl. What do you think, Robin? Use it to negotiate for Marion's father. Um, I did promise uh, Marion to save uh, her father, right? Marion steps into the conversation and draws Will Scarlet's side. They speak in low tones for a minute. Marion detects uh, points on her fingers and Will frowns. Sorry about that. Uh, Will returns and straightens his vest. Where will we? Oh, alright. Zero renown. Uh, use it to negotiate for Marion's father. Will nods. I think you have the right idea. Robert, uh, Peter will hand over the keys to you in the morning. Do what you can to secure the release of Lady Marion's father. He walks over to Peter and begins dictating instructions. Thank you, Robin. Robert shakes your hand. I appreciate your help in this. Ah, dang, I wasted my... <sighs> the Earl of Huntington walks slowly around the room and admiring tapestries and running his hands down cracks in the wall. It was only a matter of time, he says. What would you and Marion ask of me? We need men to stop the sheriff. Do you have what you need to free men? With Will Scarlet's goal, I certainly intend to try. Robert looks around. Is there anything else I can do for you? We need the... Uh, okay, so we need men to stop the sheriff? Aye. That you do. I owe Marion and her father that much. Robert nods. I brought a contingent of guards to ward away the dangers of the deep wood. They are yours. And I'll send more men as I am naval. Okay, nice. I got men now. Uh, I talked to uh, Will Scarlet about leaving on uh, leaving the crusade. The crusades. Will looks uncertain. In truth, tonight has cast some doubt uh, on my plans, and I no longer know what to think. I admire your insight, Robin. Come tomorrow, where you do think my future lies. Come tomorrow, where do you think my future lies? Um, Okay, so either I make him fight the sheriff with us, or use him to uh, 
negotiate with the nobles in the area. But I don't think there's uh, going to be a peaceful resolution. Uh, dang, I could use Marianne's help here. Um, we fight for the good of England and could use your help. You give voices. Uh, you you give voice to the doubts that have been running through my head for weeks. Very well. Will kneels before you. My sword, my men, and my tower are at your disposal. Nice. All right. Uh, okay. So why do I not gain any men? Okay. I talk to Catherine. Whips uh, crowd the windows so close and tight they outshine the candles. Catherine watches the whips. Uh, though she nods as you approach. Yes. Can I help you? I'm about to go to bed, so if you have anything to ask of me, please be quick. You aren't actually a French diplomat, are you? She looks down and away. For a moment, you imagine the hem of her dress flowing like mist over the water. Then the impression is gone. Is something wrong, Catherine? I have not been entirely honest with you. Catherine is actually the Grey Witch. <laughs> her irises vanish as her eyes roil with fog. I am uh, the one people have called. Uh, the Grey Witch, the Matron of the Mist, the Mother of Whips. I do not know what stories you have heard about me, nor do I care. I have been tricked into nearly uh, breaking my charge and curse. You have helped me uh, remember why I entered Sherwood in the first place. If I leave here tomorrow, the Mist and the Whips uh, shall run wild. If I stay, it will be to tend the magic and help it grow. Someone has worked very hard to fool me and the magic into letting me leave. And that opening is still there. I long for the freedoms of the wider world, and yet I would be sad to see all that I have done for Sherwood unravel. What do you think I should do? Your life is your own, only you can decide whether to stay or to leave. Catherine watches the whips for a while longer. I have been uh, many things over the years, feared, hated, loved, but I have never been saddened as I am tonight. Still, it has been too long since I have seen the world. I must say goodbye to Ellen Adil, but is there anything I can do for you before I go? Uh, can you support me in my discussions with uh, Will and Robert? Unfortunately, all the decisions have been made. Catherine pauses, but I shall provide you with a gift, a friendly whips to aid you through the night. Dinner is done, and one by one everyone uh, trickles off the bed. Peter leads you back to your room. They'll be dancing later if you come down to the hall in a bit. Uh, it's late, I return I turn into bed. The bed is huge and soft, and you're asleep as soon as you hit the pillow. The next morning is quiet and calm. Alright, good morning, Robin. Marion finds you during breakfast. That was a lovely dinner last night, wasn't it? She sits down and helps herself uh, to a slice of toast. What do you think of Will Scarlet anyway? He's a good man, and he has many connections with the nobility around Sherwood. I'm glad you convinced him to join us. And I'm not just saying be that because he's handsome. He'll remain at his tower for now, gathering men and resources to our cause. Uh, I'm glad we managed to get Will to stop sitting on all that gold. I know we could have used that money for a lot of things, but this will hopefully do my father some good. She searches around the plate for something that gives up. Robert Fitzhugh is quite a character. I, I've heard of him, but never seen him in person. I spoke to Robert, Robert's men at first light. Marianne sips her tea. They appear dedicated, skilled, and loyal to our cause. We are starting to have something that looks like an actual resistance force. She pours herself another cup. Thank you for helping Robert with his plan to free my father, by the way. I am trying not to get my hopes up, but if the sheriff of one of, one of his men can be bought, Robert is the one to make it happen. Catherine left this morning before breakfast. She was nice, if rather peculiar. The minstrel Alan followed her. He looked uh, unhappy, but he vanished before I could think of anything to say. Marion clears the table and unrolls her map. Will said uh, we could use his tower if we like. It has plenty of rooms and is extremely defensible, so that's uh, an option for a base, if you're willing to fix it up. Now, what's our next step? Uh, right. 
Um, since we have men now, we can uh, deal with the bandits, right? But I don't want to sell the horn. Uh, Marianne holds uh, the horn up to the light and nods. I already have a buyer lined up. Be right back. She returns an hour later with a sack of gold in hand. Now, where will we be? Yeah, I got 5,000 gold now. Uh, gold now. Um, let's uh, recruit Friar Tap. Alright, let's investigate High Ever. Alright. You return to High Ever. The wind is cold here and it bites through your clothes. Oh, wait. Alright, so I want to see the girls. I wait uh, around until nightfall. The sky turns dark as uh, the sun falls to the horizon. Night falls with a sudden finality. Black leaden clouds scud across the sky over top the... Uh, no. Uh, the setting sun casts all red shadows through the ruin ruins. There's, an, uh, there's a woman in armor kneeling in prayer amongst the ruddy stones. I stride up to the night. Stepping close, you see no night at all, only empty flagstones. The lightning flashes through the clouds above, and in the after image, there is the knight in armor fading, failing. The woman speaks, Be gone, mortal. I'm already caught in the darkness. There is no need to increase the tally. Who are you? Dame Elspeth of the Ground Table, daughter of Sir Kay, commander of the sect of Camelot. Uh, destroyer of all my father ever built, oathbreaker, misguided fool. Can I help? Uh, would you take my spirit onto you willingly and throw your s so throw yourself against the might of the blackest villain uh, this land has ever seen? Uh, come onto me, spirit. <laughs> the spectral figure stands, a young woman in full plate armor, her face worn with uh, care, her blonde, blonde hair braided down to the middle of her back. The ghost steps up to you into uh, steps up to you, into you, and her voice is suddenly in your head, her presence stretched uh, through every muscle. You're a warrior. We can move as one if you give me leave. Uh, there is an oncoming darkness, swallowing the last of the sunset. Time is short. Are you ready to face the black knight? You sank Camelot. Why? You were a knight of the round table. We don't have time for this. <laughs> Elspeth fumes. The sun vanishes a little more. Marianne, get little John. We could use his help. Marion bites her lip. Don't get yourself killed. I'll be back. You return your attention to the spirit. Uh, we are supposed to juice the Black Knight. Where's our horse, our lance? That's one of the problems. Elspeth chuckles. You would condemn yourself over a question? I see. You would very well. I thought I had no choice. I did what I could to recapture Camelot's uh, former glory, and I was mistaken. The mercenaries in my army took their promised pay, uh, promised pay in Camelot's blood. By that, I was damned. Friendless, I buried my past and wandered until I met the Black Knight. My end was swift, but my spirit lingered, and now you are tied to my faith. Fate. She stops. Cheston. I'm sorry. Again, I put necessity in the way of honor, yet to linger forever, here in guilt. You cannot imagine torment. Your men broke the covenant and sacked uh, Camelot. You're not responsible. Villainy has come once more to England. We have need of heroes. You think I can step out of uh, the grave at your behest? Defeat the Black Knight Robin and my benediction shall be upon your endeavors. If you fail, you won't have anything to worry about. Uh, can I win though? She pauses. Do you believe in redemption, Robin? That I might be forgiven for my sins? Well, you can certainly try for it. I forgive you for what uh, it's worth. It's better than nothing. I appreciate your bravery, uh, brevity, though it appears you have a vested interest in my being in uh, good spirits. <laughs> okay, so should I relinquish control or... All right, I'll just. Uh... Okay, Elspeth takes controls on your uh, 
takes control of your limbs and moves you through a series of stretches. Satisfied with your body, she stands facing the fading sun and waits. Jagged lightning fills the sky. The black night approaches. The sun is swallowed by darkness and the night sweeps over the knoll. Lightning sears the clouds and the black knight is there upon his nightmare steed, flames snorting from its nostrils and smoke trilling in its steps. The knight himself is an empty shell of matte black armor. No insignia hangs from the charred oak of his lance. No name is scrawled across the scabbard of his great sword. Then the image doubles. The horse is just a horse and his rider, the sheriff of Nottingham. Strange, isn't it, how circumstances should throw us together like this, Loxley, as if it were fate that you and I should meet in conflict until only one remains. I draw my sword.